know-it-alls, Mummies, a Twin Sisters e-book. I want my mummy, and I bet you will too. Hello there. In this edition of Know-It-Alls, we'll explore the world of ancient Egypt. And we'll all become know-it-alls on the subject of mummies. Open your books to the first page and listen along as I read. And don't forget, when you hear the sound of the closing of the mummy's tomb, turn the page. Any dead body that still has skin on it is called a mummy. Pharaoh was what kings in ancient Egypt were called. After death, most bodies rot, dry out, and turn to dust. Thousands of years ago, in the desert land of Egypt, great temples were built by order of the pharaohs, mansions for the gods that ruled the land of the living and the land of the dead. And the priests of these gods helped transform millions of bodies into mummies. Mommy houses. In Egypt, the pharaohs were worshipped as if they were gods themselves. When they passed by, people dropped to their knees and kissed the ground. It's little wonder that some of the greatest tombs ever built to house mummies were created for the pharaohs. Mummyland, Egypt, Mediterranean Sea, Valley of the Golden Mummies, Valley of the Kings, Nile River, Giza, Palestine, Sinai, Thebes, Red Sea. Why mummify? The priests wanted to make sure the bodies looked in death as they had in life. Ancient Egyptians believed that at the moment of death, two spirits that give human beings life, Ka and Sol, Ba, leave the body. But they re-enter it after mummification, so that the person can live again in the land of the dead. Hence, it was very important for the spirits to be able to recognize their body. The mummy of the pharaoh Khufu was placed in what is called the Great Pyramid. It is the largest stone structure in the world, consisting of 2,300,000 stone blocks, each weighing several tons. That's one big tombstone. We know all of this because scientists found mysterious writings called hieroglyphs on the walls and objects inside tombs. When they learned to read the symbols, they began to understand why mummies were created. Making mummies! The very first mummies were dried in the hot desert sand. An oval grave was dug, 
and the body was placed inside it with its head turned toward the west, facing the setting sun. Objects that the Egyptians believed would be needed in the next life were buried with it. And then the body was covered with sand, which mummified it naturally. Mummification, the first 40 days. As the centuries passed, the embalming became much more elaborate, taking 70 days to turn a body into a mummy. The brain was pulled out through the nose with a special instrument made for that purpose. Embalmers are what the workers who created the mummies are called. First, most of the internal organs, except for the heart and kidneys, were removed, embalmed, and put in special containers called canopic jars. Then, the whole body was covered with oil and spices. Next, the corpse was caked with natron, a natural kind of salt, that absorbs all moisture as it kills the bacteria that rot flesh. The natron was left on for about 40 days. Each finger and toe was wrapped separately. The last 30 days. Kali, Orza, Peta. When the salt was washed off, the body was rubbed with a mixture of oils, wax, and gum to keep the skin from cracking. Tree resin was then spread over the corpse to keep air away from the skin for the same reasons that the dentist coats your teeth to prevent tooth decay. Because corpses shrivel over time, the mummy's embalmers stuff the body with sand, sawdust, and wads of cloth so that it would keep its shape. Then, the mummy was tightly wrapped in layers of linen bandages. Each layer was brushed with resin to make the bandages stick together. A mask of the person's face was placed over the head, so the spirits would recognize the person when they returned, even though the head and body were wrapped in bandages. Is that your mommy, honey? The Egyptian Book of the Dead was a book of magic spells to help the dead on their difficult journey to a new life. Finally, the body was laid in its case, which was often made in the shape of the mummy. Sometimes there were inner and outer cases, heavily decorated with gold and hieroglyphs. Inside the tomb, the pharaoh's coffin was placed inside a very heavy stone box called a sarcophagus. Boo! The bodies were often buried with magic charms to ward off evil. Sometimes, the charms were wrapped inside the linen bandages. Grave Robbers! But were the mummies safe? No! Robbers looted most of the large tombs, such as the pyramids in the years following their inhabitants' death. The thieves even unwrapped the mummies, looking for the gold and gems used as magic charms. 
That's why the Pharaoh's cemetery was eventually moved from Giza, where the pyramids are, to the Valley of the Kings, a deserted place near the town of Thebes. The tombs in this valley were cut deep into the desert rock and unmarked. Even so, they were robbed. Around 1000 BC, the priests decided to gather up all the royal mummies and hide them. This hiding place was not discovered until the 1870s, almost 3,000 years later. King Tut! On November 26, 1922, an English archaeologist looked through a small hole into a tomb in the Valley of the Kings. What he saw dazzled him. Mummy cases, shrines, statues, furniture, and jewelry covered in gold and gemstones gleamed in the torchlight. The scientists eventually determined that this was the tomb of the pharaoh Tutankhamun, who died when he was less than 20. His solid gold coffin weighed 296 pounds, or 110.4 kilograms. When King Tut's tomb was opened, mysterious deaths occurred among people working on the project. Rumors about a curse on those who opened the tomb soon circulated. Mommies 101! Until about 200 years ago, people didn't study mummies. In fact, local people used to burn them as fuel because they caught fire easily. Other people ground them up to use as medicine. But when the first modern explorers arrived in Egypt in the early 1800s, they realized that understanding and preserving the mummies was one of the keys to understanding ancient Egypt. At first, they unwrapped the mummies to figure out how people looked 5,000 years ago, how long they lived, and how they died. Today, with CAT scans and other X-ray machines, scientists can examine the mummies inside their cases and bandages thus keeping them safe from air, which hastens their decay. Mommy Madness! Pharaohs weren't the only mummies. Common people and even animals were mummified. In all, as many as 700,000 Egyptian mummies may have been created. In early Hollywood horror movies, mummies became great stars. In the 1932 flick, The Mummy, an archaeologist reads aloud an ancient spell and brings a mummified priest back to life. In the 1800s, over 300,000 cat mummies were shipped to England, where they were ground up for use as garden fertilizer. The god of mummification and the dead was called Anubis. He had the head of a jackal, a mask of which the priest wore during embalming ceremonies. In 1996, a site with more than an estimated 10,000 mummies was found, many of them cloaked in golden masks. The area is now called Valley of the Golden Mummies.
How many secrets still lie buried in Egypt's ancient sands? No one knows for sure. But, as the Sphinx seems to say, Mum's the word! <laughs>